Welcome to this week's pieces. So if you join me for this thrift haul, you'll remember that there was a big piece taken out of this corbel. Well, I found it inside. So all I'm going to do is take some, this is essentially uh, super glue, and I'm going to take it and re-glue it and then add some more glue around it and get it really strong again so that I can then paint it. So that's all I'm doing here is using this glue, getting it on there. This is, I've never used the brown one before and it's kind of awesome. It didn't matter in this case because this piece is getting painted, but it has come in handy for some wood pieces and things. Then while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and kind of get everything else prepped. So these brackets need to come off these shelves. These shelves will also need some of that glue as well. Just because, again, they were like a fiberboard, just MDF, and they had just some marks and chips and stuff on them. So on the underside where the brackets were, you saw me, I just filled the holes in with some wood glue. I'm only doing that because I don't like taking screws in and out of MDF because it always just leaves a looser hole. So if I can fill in the holes now with the glue, it will the fibers will absorb it, kind of expand a little bit as they do anytime that they even get near moisture. Um, and that will make sure that when I put the screws back in, it's giving me a firmer surface. So I'm not putting in and taking out screws without kind of making sure that they're secure because I just don't want there to be any issues later so that's what I'm doing there and then as you can see I'm just using that glue to kind of fill in any chips and get those things nice and ready to go for paint um, the back of this corbel had a few drip marks which was kind of weird because the whole thing was white I don't know it was a very interesting piece so I just used a chisel to get those off and then sanded what I could on this and you can see I have a teeny tiny piece of sandpaper there. I'm just smoothing out where I had that glue and making sure that it's shaped um, like the one on the opposite side. You can't even tell that there was a repair made now that this thing is painted up. And it's. I'm really glad I took the time to do this because I thought I would have to mold something. But then when I found that extra piece on the inside, I was just, I was very pleased. And this is typically the way that I prep most of my pieces, especially smalls. So they'll get a uh, good cleaning. And then if there's any surface that's too shiny that I don't think, say like liquid sandpaper would work on, I'll just get a little bit of sandpaper and go through and rough up the surface just to make sure that I'm going to get good adhesion with my paint. This also helps in those little areas where I put the glue just to make sure that they're smoothed out as well. The reason I did the glue on this is because now if any moisture does touch that because it no longer had the coating on it, how they have the weird plasticky faux wood finish coating, um, it's susceptible to liquid. So with the glue on there, it kind of strengthens it and makes it so that if any moisture comes near it, it's as safe as it was with the coating on it. it actually, it's probably safer. But again, I'm just going to go through and clean up all these pieces and sand the ones that really need a little extra help. Now, a lot of my corbels I do very similarly, and that's just because they sell well like this, because people um, like this style and people who are picking out corbels, a lot of times I will get the same buyer for multiple pieces like this because they're doing an entire wall and so if I paint them similarly there's a higher chance of them one buying them together and two that it'll go quickly so in this case they're getting painted in iron gate which is a darker gray and they will need two coats because they're both pretty shiny surfaces so I'll just go ahead and do two coats. And you guys know I work in stages, so I kind of pick out all the things that I'm going to do this gray color and get those all done. That way they can be drying while I'm working on something else. 
This clock face, I knew I was going to do white, so that was easy. It also needed two coats. And then the rest of it, I did in an actual, this one was in a lighter gray. So this part was really fun for me. A little more meticulous, but the brush I'm using now is actually a nail striping brush. I have a package of these and they are perfect for these super, super fine lines where you need to be really precise with your paint and not have your bristles splay out. So that's what this brush is. If you get, they have them on Amazon, wherever, they're just, they're really great for doing these teeny tiny like striping points because they're meant to do stripes on nails and nail art. So it's just so thin and so fine and it fits in these little tiny areas. And this is the gold metallic paint. This one's from Rust-Oleum and it is lovely. And you can really see here how just very thin these little lines were, that it's just going in there perfectly and getting in and doing what I wanted to do. Because had I used a regular just like fine tip art brush, I don't think I would have gotten as good of results. Now these are the three wooden candlesticks, candlestick holders that used to be um, like a Christmas red with a splotchy gold kind of stamped all around it. I just did a base coat of gray. I wasn't worried about doing two coats on this because I knew I was going to do so many layers on this one. So then I just added this very soft, it's almost like a periwinkle blue. And I'm just doing this in a wash. And so I'm getting it on certain areas and then wiping it back because I want it to sit in the low points and then just to kind of have a hint of it on the rest of the piece because I'm going to go over this again in a different color. And so you'll see me using my lids like this for the wash. I just keep a lot of water in the lids, add a little bit of paint when I need to, and then I can wipe it back and work in these small sections. That way I'm not making a big vat of wash and I don't need to, it's not a big surface for me to want to spray the surface and then add it so you guys know I have a bunch of different ways to do washes and I just kind of do the way that suits the situation best. Now since I don't like to add so much gold all over these corbels I do like to still bring out all the details so I'm just dry brushing a little bit of white. Oh I say a little bit but there's quite a bit there. Anyways it just pops all those details and brings everything out 
And that way, when I add the gold, it covers up some of the white, but then I don't have to add so much gold so it's not super blingy. It's just, it just kind of has that older feel because the white adds another layer and the gray is on there, dark in the background. And then the gold is just kind of this extra thing where you can imagine part of it has come off over time. But it's not, it's just, you know, brand new. <laughs> nice refreshed paint job. But I like it to look old. I want it to have like that old world vibe. On this one, because it was so detailed, I think it could have got away with just doing the gold on this, but I'm glad I went ahead and did the white because I think it looks just lovely having that one extra step on there. And this frame I knew I was going to do several layers as well. I went a bit lighter with this one. Typically I go dark with my frames, but I wanted to do the white since I already had it out for the clock base. And I'm using this same like periwinkle blue color to do a wash so it'll sit down low. I want that to sit down low. I don't want it to be on any of the high points. So I'm adding it on, wiping it back, doing the same technique where it's just sitting in the lid. And then again, we'll let that dry and it'll get a couple more layers as well. And I finally get to start working on these lamps. So I did a couple, I did one first just to kind of test out what I wanted to do. And then this is me starting the second one because I felt like I was in a good place here. So after giving it a good clean, all I did was go directly in with this metallic bronze. I'm working in a very, very thin layer so you can still see all the other things through it. And I just want to do a thin layer, let that dry, and then I will go in with a second coat. Back to the frame, you can see the blue just sitting down low. I'm gonna do the same thing, but with this brown color because I just felt like the blue was a little bit too bright with the white. So adding in just a little bit of this brown over the top is going to kind of antique it a little bit. And I'm going back to the bronze again, but this time on the candlesticks. So this turned out so lovely. I loved these colors together. It was very just dark gemstone fall. Would work for winter as well. It is just the prettiest combination and I adore it so much. And I'm putting it on there in any place that seems like a little too strong. I'm wiping it back. I don't want this to be a solid coverage of this. I just wanted to add a little something. It almost has like a satiny finish at the end instead of a full metallic. And it turned out gorgeous with that. And then I can go in again with the second coat of the bronze. Same thin layers. I don't want to do anything too thick. But I'm going in with the bronze again and doing the second layer on this lamp. Now, I've painted fabric before, but I've not done a lampshade. So I decided to try it. 
I'm doing, again, very, very, very thin coats with this, and I have the lampshade sprayed with water first. Again, I practiced on the other one before I showed you so I can make sure that it turned out before I'm giving advice that doesn't work. So I just made sure the lampshade was damp with my Mr. Bottle and then worked in very thin, thin layers with the bronze paint. And you can even add more water as you go if you need to thin it out even more. And now I'm going in with just the gold metallic again and doing highlights. I do not put this everywhere, not on every single one of the high points. I'm just kind of sporadically going around. I can use my finger to lighten it up anywhere that I need to. And I just want to make it look like it's been there a while. And this one on those top edges, I kind of used it as a little bit of shading around the edges of those kind of petals that are coming out. And then for the candlesticks, I just hit a few of the rings around and I added it on with a brush, but then I kind of softened it back with my fingers so it wasn't crazy strong. You can only see it when a light hits it a certain way and it's lovely. And this is my first time trying the metallic paint with these stamps. And oh man, am I in love. You guys know I love these stamps anyways. I think they're incredible. It's a great bang for your buck because you get to use them endlessly. You know I don't use a ton of transfers or anything like that because I feel like anything that you can only use once, it's just hard for me to do that. But stencils and stamps I think are a great investment. And with what you get from them, I think it's incredible. So that is the Rose Toile stamp, or I should say it's just part of it, a piece of it. Um, I got it off Etsy. I think it's been years ago now but so on these brackets I just added a little more just some highlights of the gold paint I didn't want to paint the brackets I just wanted to cover up the old gold that was on there and on this frame I'm just doing high points with the gold and so it doesn't look really really strong it just it just looks nice okay and this might be weird but I did the white again and I just did dry brushing and made sure it wasn't too strong anywhere and I did dry brushing the white over the top of the two coats of copper and it looks so cool. They're just, they're really cool looking. I was very pleased with how this came out because it just made everything pop so it still has the bronziness to it but it, oh man, it's good stuff. And then everything that needed to be sealed, I just sealed it with wax. You put it on, let it sit, and then buff it off. Since the shelves were done, I could reapply the brackets. So these went on so well because I had already put the wood glue in previously. They just felt super tight, super sturdy, and I wasn't worried about them coming out at all. I didn't show you this because I've painted a billion rolling pins and I just did the handles on this one, but I actually did a base of Woodland Harbor under the bronze and it turned out phenomenal. So for the lampshade, it needs two coats. I'm actually taking a bit of sandpaper and going over the top of the paint that I've already done and knocking it back some. And that'll give me a smoother finish on the final coat. I only needed two coats on this, which was great. And then I also didn't show it, but I painted the inside of the lampshade as well so that it didn't just look strange and weird in there. But yeah, so that was the other one. This part, I'm just adding gold straight gold over the tassels because huh, I cannot find my gold leaf but I like having a base of gold underneath gold leaf sometimes not all the time in this case I wanted a base of gold could not find my gold leaf so I do plan on gold leafing oh hi Taryn here with Elegant Upgrades and uh we've got some finished pieces so we have quite a bit of things I've got the lampshades and lamps not just the shades but they're over here as well I didn't quite get the gold leaf on them. I still plan on putting gold leaf on the tassels just to tie in the upper tassels with them. However, I cannot find them because things are a little bit crazy around here right now. So once I find that, I will then update them and put that on there because I really, really want those on there. 
Um, these shelves are my absolute favorite thing ever. I think they are just stunning and I can't wait to use the stamp skin with the metallic paint because it is awesome. And then of course this finish here that I know is really hard to kind of tell and it looks different in every light and I think they are just lovely and super fall winter vibing on me. Oh they're just they're stunning and I love these so much. I will be doing this finish again because I just think it is gorgeous. Anyways, hope you all enjoy this. I hope you gained some form of inspiration of any kind, really. And I'll see you next week.